For those of you who aren't familiar with our group, we are the Young Professionals of Lancaster. We um, actually are a subsidiary of the Chamber of Commerce. So um, work a lot in tandem with that group. And we were founded in 2011 was the first, it was just a group of young professionals that went to the chamber and said, hey, I think we need something in the community that's a little more formal for young professionals to network and get together. And they loved the idea and here we are all these years later. Um, we have over 200 members and it's kind of hard to classify that because we don't really ask for anything super formal. Young professionals, um, you know, most of us don't like super formal things anyway. So we try to be <laughs> really chill and relax in how we run things in general. So we don't really um, track a membership or anything and there's no membership fee. So a lot of um, young professionals when they're first starting out, you know, and especially in your career to put a lot of money into something um, isn't always doable. So we actually have no membership fee at all. And most of our events are free. And the way we do that is we have, a, if you don't know this by now, um, Lancaster is pretty awesome. And we have so many partners and organizations that will truly step in to help us any way they can. So when we have what we call a power breakfast and we have a speaker come in, that speaker always comes free of charge. We've never had to pay a speaker, which is pretty phenomenal. And then we actually go around to Lancaster businesses and ask them to donate uh, breakfast items and coffee items. And that is always a resounding sure can as well. So um, that is the way we are able to have most of our events free. The only time we do have a charged event is if it's over a lunch. And at that point we ask like $10 for the lunch or whatever, but yeah, so that's a little bit about who we are. We do have a steering committee um, and these are the members that comprise that. Although if you are in the young professional group, you know that it's kind of all hands on deck. Um, our committee kind of oversees the planning of the year, but we are always welcome, um, welcoming feedback from our members to make sure we're doing some you know, events that are going to um, be fruitful for them. So this is our steering committee and who they are. Eric Croft, he's um, uh, Vice President at Park National Bank. Myself, Nicole Davis, I do investments at Park National Bank. Andrea, who's the Director of Community Impact at our local United Way. Julia Taylor, who I believe is on the call as well. She's the Marketing Coordinator at the Chamber. You've probably heard of her or at least met her by now. And Colin, who is everywhere. If you don't know Colin, you need to know Colin. Uh, he is the marketing, marketing and Events Coordinator for Destination Downtown. So we try to comprise our group of people that are in the know in different sectors in the community. And it seems like this group has worked pretty well so far, but always um, open to having more committee members. So our focus are a few things. We kind of did a revamp about five years ago when I jumped on board of who do we want to be and what do we want to be known as in the community. So we truly want our focus to be these four things. Um, for a lot of young professionals, you know, when you're 22 or 23 and you're right out of college, it's a little nerve wracking to, to walk into a Rotary or Kiwanis um, when there's older professionals in the room and you can just kind of, you know, I'm sure you can imagine back then. Um, it's even back then for me at this point, it's kind of nerve, nerve wracking your first couple uh, networking engagements. So the young professionals we kind of utilize as that one stop, that first stop out of college for a lot of, um, people that are new in their career and trying to start, you know, giving back in some way and starting their networking events. And it's, it's a little more relaxed of an atmosphere. It's truly their peers. It's people that are their age. Um, the committee is really good at, you know, welcoming new people and making sure that everybody feels engaged and like they had a chance to connect with somebody at our event. And it's at, down at Keller Marketplace is where we have most of our meetings. We also utilize the chamber as well. So very relaxed atmosphere. Um, wherever we are so that people feel welcome and it's not as intimidating to, to kind of walk in a room sometimes when it's, you know, your peers and your age group. So we do that personal and professional development via what we call a power breakfast. So once a quarter, except for COVID, of course, once a quarter, we get together down at COVID or down at COVID, down at Keller, and <laughs> we have a speaker in town um, come in and just share their story with us. Just very um, general, just their story and how they got where they were. 
and share any tips and, and feedback with us to, as we start our journey, right, in the community. Um, education, that is via our lunch and learns. So we usually have two lunch and learns per year that actually are around a topic, whether it's the importance of boards, we've done that, we've done the importance of social media, um, you know, just tools that a new young professional can use to advance their career. We always have a community and giving back um, portion to our group. And we do many things throughout the year, but some ones that we've recently done that you may have um, heard about too, and you've probably done at your organization, the diaper drive. Um, that was a fun way to, to give back to the community via Bottoms Up. Um, we also partner with Reflections Nursing Home every single um, Christmas. And it's just kind of cool because that dynamic's interesting. Two totally different generations coming together to um, donate toys and Christmas gifts to Maywood Mission. We do that every year. It's probably our largest event of the year. We call it the Toy Drive. Um, but anything like, I mean, Andrea and a couple other YPs were down painting benches at the fountain this week. So anytime somebody reaches out to us and says, hey, can some YPs be at this? It's usually, you know, we usually get a couple people that are um, all hands on deck. So it's nice to see that as well. Lastly, networking um, and teaching, you know, young professionals the importance of networking early on in your career. This is just kind of sums up everything we are and everything we try to do within our group. So volunteer activities, I named some of them. There's some others on there. Um, but lastly, and the reason we're here today is the community garden. Andrea actually was um, the, the brainchild behind this. She actually came to me a few years ago and said, why don't we look to actually start a community garden in Lancaster as close to downtown as possible um, and see what that would look like. So we just kind of ran with it and we had all the wheels in motion, like many of you on your projects in 2019, everything was gearing up for a big 2020 debut and then a pandemic hit. So everything was on hold, but we um, about a month ago decided, okay, we need to hit this initiative again. It had so much buzz in the community. So many people across all age groups were looking to help. So we are here to tell you where we are on this project and how you can help, whether it be through a sponsorship or if you wanna literally be in the weeds and, and um, hit the ground running with us and play in some dirt and all of those things, um, there's opportunities for that as well. So I will let Andrea provide the update. So um, kind of like Nicole was saying, in 2019, I kind of thought about this project. Um, my aunt and uncle used to live in Westerville and they had a community garden. I just thought that was a really cool thing that they had in that community. Um, it was just where people could come together and just grow things that maybe they couldn't do where they live or they just didn't know how to do it. So they needed people around them to kind of encourage them. And I just thought that'd be a really cool thing that we could kind of give back to our community. Um, hopefully, you know, somewhere that it's close to people to get to, somewhere that they can af be affordable, have sponsors, have opportunities to people to do it that maybe um, don't have the opportunity in their home. And so um, we kind of started partnering with the land bank because they, they acquire land that maybe um, people for was foreclosed on or there was some other reason that they had to take over um, the land. So there is a space on Main Street, uh, many of you may have seen it, it was the old working man's gas station. And that space was available and they decided to um, see if we were interested in that space. And they were just waiting on some, um, some approvals from the EPA and some other organizations to make sure it's a safe space because they had to take out the gas tanks there. So um, before COVID, we were kind of waiting on that. And then it took a little longer because of COVID. I don't think um, people were out and about approving those type of things. So they just received a letter, I think about a week or so ago from Buster, which is I think a department of the EPA and no further action is required of the land bank to make sure that is a safe space. So it is all ready and safe for us to be able to use that space. So there are some things that they have to do to um, get it, I guess, kind of like up to code or kind of up to par for us. Um, they are going to possibly remove some gravel and put in some grass. However, we kind of talked about that we may want gravel as our base to put on some raised beds. So that may be an option that we are looking at and keeping that gravel there just to, so we'd have less maintenance of grass and that type of thing. Um, I think they also 
have to do some improvements to the areas that they had to take over to take down that building to um, the other property owners around there. So once they get that done, which they're hoping to do so in the next 30 days, they have a board meeting on August 10th, which Nicole and I are going to attend um, just to kind of make sure that they're aware of everything that we want to do to the property and make sure that it is kind of, I guess, handed over to us to use for the garden. So we're getting really excited. Our goal is to have it up and running in the spring of 2022. Um, we know a lot of gardening is kind of, you have to start that in the spring. There are some options in the fall, but we feel like for a strong start, we want to do that in the spring. Um, and so we have a committee that's helping kind of help us figure out how we want to do things, how we want to split it up, um, what we want to build there. So if anyone is interested in joining that committee, we do have quite a few on the committee as well, but the more minds, the better, because I, I try to have a green thumb. I think I know some things about gardening, but I probably kill a lot more things than I actually grow, but I think it's fun. So that's, that's another motivation for me in having this community garden is I just think it's a good hobby and a good way to get in nature and get away from our desk for a little bit. Um, Cause I know a lot of us spend a lot of time in the front of the computer or just working. So it's good to have an outlet like that. Um, so in order to have this community garden, obviously we have to have some funds to support it. Um, we've applied for some grants. Unfortunately, some of them have been turned down. However, we are waiting on um, a response from one of the, one grant right now. So if anyone is aware of any type of gardening or community enhancement grants that are out there that we may be able to apply for, please let us know. Um, but the other opportunity we have is sponsorships. So when we first brought this out into the community, we had a few people that were very interested in sponsoring. Um, but we're always looking for more. We haven't committed any funds currently. So if you're interested, you know, we, we need to purchase raised beds. We'd like to have a shed to be able to keep garden tools and other items in there. We would like to put a fence around it just to kind of keep it a little more secure, um, possibly a composter and then other miscellaneous items that we may not think about right now. But once we get the garden up and running, there's probably items that we're going to have to purchase. And then obviously monetary donations to kind of help offset those purchases. Um, and then we are still going to work with the advanced auto parts store there. Um, I guess they were really kind to the land bank and letting them use their water source. So we're hoping that we can work with them to have a water source from them to be able to water the gardens because that's obviously a very important part of a garden is watering. Um, so if, if any of those things sound exciting or you're interested in that, please let us know. Or if you just wanna get involved with the young professionals, we are definitely um, trying to ramp up again now that COVID is kind of letting up a little bit and we can be more in person. Um, another opportunity, um, since we can't do anything right now for the garden, like in, like actually gardening, is AHA is looking for volunteers for their gardening beds. So if anyone wants to get involved with that with us, we would love to be able to kind of help AHA out while we're in the planning processes for our, our community garden. Um, and we are also, I don't know, Nicole, if we want to mention this, but we are thinking about having an after hours event next July, or next week, July 22nd, um, from four to six, I believe at Double Edge. So we would love to have anyone join us at that event as well. That would be a fun way to get back together and just kind of start off our end of our summer, right? And kind of get back together more now that we are able to. Um, does anyone have any questions for Nicole or I? Andrea, I know I asked you this last time you guys were on, but what is the age limit again for the young professionals? <laughs> well, we try That's not my favorite to question. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Nicole. I'll let you answer it. Well, it's funny because we get asked that all the time. And um, I always say, like, we're not carting at the door or anything. It's not like a club, but um, you know, generally 22 to 40, but I don't want to discourage anybody who's like 41 and really you know, wanting to come to our events, please exactly. come. Um, we really do have all ages, truly. Um, but if we had to, because we got that question so much, we were like, we should kind of have an age range to answer that, but we are not going to ask for your ID. So, yeah. I think maybe it should be how young do you feel? Yes. What do you feel? As long as you feel young, then please come. Young at heart. <laughs> Good question. There is another volunteer opportunity as young professionals that we're trying to help out with. If anyone is interested, it was on our Facebook page and I emailed it out. Um, the festival is looking for volunteers for their um, raffling off of their car. So 
I think that when you volunteer, you're going to be at the event that they're at. So they do have some opportunities at the concert. So I signed up for the ABBA concert because, or ABBA concert, because why not? But you just help sell some raffle tickets. And if you sell the winning raffle ticket, you might get a monetary um, prize. So if you're interested, let Kelson Henwood know at the, found, at the festival or reach out to me and I can send you that information. Cool, cool. I don't have any questions in the chat. If anyone has a question, you feel free to unmute. I don't see very many faces either. No one has cameras on. Tonight. Actually, no cameras besides us three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there were a few at the beginning, but once the PowerPoint comes on, I think people uh, turn it off. Hi, Beth. But, yeah, there's a... <laughs> um, Well, I, I wanted to my mention email to is... Oh, sorry. Oh. I put my email in the chat, just, and Andrea, if you want to as well, if anybody on this call says, I would love to be a part of that committee, or I'm interested in sponsorship opportunities for um, our business, definitely reach out. We're going to have, um, you know, we'll I'll definitely have a plaque out at the community garden. We're going to do a huge ribbon cutting, food trucks, all the things. Um, so if you want your name at the community garden, your business name, there's a way to do that, or you personally, or an honor or memory of someone so our emails are below either um, Andrea or I would be happy to help explain that further. So I have a question about um, who, anyone in the community can come and have a plot and how does that, how much is that and what does that look like? So we are still kind of um, confirming the price of a plot because we feel like there does need to be a little bit of a cost to the garden just to make sure that people are invested in the garden. Um, so they don't just say, yeah, they want to do it and then don't come back anymore. So we are kind of throwing around the idea of $50 for like a year to use the plot. And that would be yours. and You can do whatever you want with it. Um, there may be a little bit more um, rules that we may have to come up with as we learn more. But um, we want it just to be open and available to anyone. We are looking at ways that we can assign those maybe like through a digital, a digital way that people can just go online and pick a plot and pay for it and then that's theirs. Um, we're hoping to have like a lock on the fence in the in the shed so people would have a code to be able to get in to make sure that everything's safe and secure and can use that space. Was there any other guidelines that you guys were thinking of on um, what to grow when or anything like that or is there anything people can just plant whatever they would like? I would say we probably will have to come up with a little bit because like if you have a viney plant, you have to make sure it would stay mm -hmm. in your area so it wouldn't interfere with someone else's. But um, if anyone has any ideas or thoughts on that, we are open to those because we've never done this before. So we, we probably are gonna have to learn and grow as we go, but we are definitely open to figuring out what the best way to do this will be. Have you guys been in contact at all with the Master Gardeners Group? We did reach out to them initially, I believe, didn't we, Nicole? Um, and I think they were just had a lot going on. And they gave us a booklet of helpful like gardening mm -hmm. ideas. Um, so that may be a good idea to reach out to them again to see if they're willing to maybe be a little more involved. And you mentioned to me earlier before the call that there is a community garden um, already in Lancaster, already started up that do you know if they're taking people or if it's full? I don't know that. That's a, I don't really know that much about it, unfortunately. I just know the South Side is kind of trying to um, reinvigorate that area. So that was someone had some land and they offered it up and I know they tilled it and kind of got it ready, but I'm not familiar with exactly all the details on that area. Okay. But um, I think if anyone is interested in that, I'm trying to remember the other lady's name, but Linda Berge Disser with the city. Mm -hmm would have more information on that. I was in Hilton Head a few weeks ago and they have a really amazing community garden. I mean, it's oh. huge and it's right um, in sea pines, but the oh. plots were huge, like probably the size of the entire community garden um, that we're talking about. Um, but each one had a shed and everybody had a little, a little, um, bench and it was so nice wow. and I'm like I mean it's Hilton Head so it's different than here but it was very very cool and I thought I should have taken a picture when we were there um, but I thought that's definitely something to strive for you know when we start small and you know create these different gardens all around town um, there's definitely some things that we can 
we can grow with with the spaces. And I think that's pretty cool. Um, let me see. I think I had a question. Oh, Connie, um, Stacy Hicks said Connie Smith, our master gardener coordinator, is on vacation this week, but I'll let you know when she returns. Um, that you guys might be reaching out to her. So Stacy, thank you for that. Okay. I don't have any other questions. So I think we might be okay. So we really appreciate you guys coming on today and talking about this. I'm excited about it. I'm on the committee. Um, I'm excited to see what I can, you know, help with. I don't know what I can help with, but um, I also kill everything that I attempt to grow. So I don't know that that will be much help, but I will definitely try to help in any way that I can. I'm excited to move forward with that. Thank you so much for inviting us today. Yeah. It was good to be with you all. Yeah, no thank problem. you. And hopefully you all will join us one way or another. We'll be excited to have you. So if anyone has anything else for Nicole or Andrea, their email addresses are in the chat. You can write those down. And yeah, I think we're good. So thank you guys so much. Have a great day and hope to see you next week for virtual community. Thank you. Bye.